Mr. Davis? Just wanted to wish you all the best. Yeah, it's like you said. If I was innocent, everything would work out. So what happens now? You go back to your life? No, no, no. I mean with the hit-and-run driver, the one the witness saw. Maybe he'll turn himself in. Huh. Would you? To me, what's most interesting about this movie is that it's a story anyone can relate to. Is a is a guy at the pinnacle of his career uh, who has uh, with everything, has a wonderful family and a, and a wonderful job, and is brilliant. And all of a sudden, something fate hits, and uh, something out of nowhere comes to destroy his life. It's about a young ADA who has everything going in his life, and he finds himself in a situation uh, that he has to. Uh, I guess, be very uh, smart to get himself out of, and it becomes much bigger than what he thought it originally was. Bottom line, so we have enough for a conviction. Davis was found with a dead man in his van. Mitch will eat him for breakfast. Charge him. Murder one. So I've been working with uh, Silvio and Frederick from Paradox and Bavaria Pool um, on a number of different projects. So this is another one where we came up with a financial model that we think would work in the current sort of financial environment that making a movie, movies at a certain budget level and mostly thrillers, which uh, are a little easier to finance in, in today's market. So I believe this script came out of APA down in LA. Peter Dowling wrote it, and because we're trying to make co-productions between Canada and Europe, it was a perfect fit because Peter Dowling is British. So uh, Silvio and Fred brought the project to me to say, we think this is a good project to, to, to make under this sort of European-Canadian co-production model. Smell that? That's the smell of freedom. It starts and it ends with the crews, the quality of the people that are here, their willingness to go um, to the most extreme levels to get things done in spite of budget limitations, weather, those kinds of challenges. Um, and then the other thing that Manitoba offers that I think is so surprising to people when they come here is the variety and quality of locations. Um, we're very much a locations-based film community. We don't do a lot of studio shows. Um, that's not our bread and butter. Our bread and butter is, is being able to access practical locations that give the right kind of look for major US centers. Uh, this film set in Chicago and Winnipeg pulls that off without any question because the architects who built the city at the turn of the century are the same people who built Chicago. He looks terrified. He should be. He's staring down 20 to life for this one alone. But we went after uh... Dominic uh, very, very aggressively um, from the beginning because we just thought he would be the right guy for the part. Uh, he is a likable guy. He is vulnerable. Um, he, has, he has that uh, quality of uh, an everyday man that people can relate to. And so we went after him very, very aggressively. We thought of him right away. And, um, and then later on, we were looking for, for the, uh, the, character, the, the, the guy to play Levy. We, we thought of Sam Jackson pretty, pretty early, and, um, and uh, uh, we went after him as well, and we uh, took, a, took, him, took a while to get him because he's very busy doing a lot of movies. Um, Gloria, we cast for fairly recently on the film, and I think, again, she's perfect for the role. It, it was a, an interesting role to cast because there's a fine balance of that role being a female in a man's world, so to speak, but I don't think we want it to be, we don't want it to come off as cliched. Ryan was just, a, when we did the auditions for the role of Jimmy, uh, he just sort of stood out as head above the rest because I think he was just very genuine in his take of the role, and I think uh, Dominic and Ryan have gotten on very well in trying to form that sort of sibling bond. So 
uh, every yeah, everybody is I think thrilled with his performance so far. And uh, again, he just I think sort of hit it out of the park right from the very get go in his audition. Bitch, I'm on parole. I get busted breaking into some guy's fucking house. Come on, I don't want you breaking in. I'll break in. I just need for you to pale him. Let me know when he's coming back. Ah, it's just the lady in the bedding then. Ah. Forget it, Mitch. Let it go. I'm done. Um, I'm playing Mitch Brockton in the film, and um, I'm the guy who involves himself accidentally in something that he um, then tries to repair and fails dramatically at doing. So I called your house the other day. You know, looking for you. Your wife. She doesn't know who I am, does she? Man, I immediately loved this character when I read the script. Um, there's just so much going on for Jimmy, there's so much to play with there. You know, he, he is such a great story arc. He's got an incredible backstory. He's, uh, you know, he's incredibly likable for an ex-con, you know. Detective Cannon? Yeah. How many T's and committed? So Detective Cannon is um, a, a woman who has clearly uh, been very successful uh, dealing with and working in very much predominantly a man's world. Still to this day, I think that the police work, detective work is, is predominantly uh, testosterone filled. <laughs> but, um, you know, she's, she's still a woman who is, you know, she's feminine. Just because she works in a man's world doesn't mean that she's lost her femininity. But very strong, highly capable. Every character is different. Every character is unique. I mean, he has his own background. He's very different from the background of the majority of characters that I play. His name's Clinton Davis. He's an auto mechanic whose wife and child have been murdered a few years before. He was tied up, had his throat slashed. I watched his family die. And there are certain things that happen in the beginning of the film that you know, make you question whether or not, you know, um, my character is actually involved in any of this, and you know that the other character is. Um, the suspicions could be founded or unfounded. We really don't know. You know, I don't think I should answer any more questions till I have a lawyer present. You know, I think that's a really good idea. It seems to me that, that the message is about responsibility. You know, I think that we are all responsible for our actions one way or another. And, and um, I think it's about consequence. And there are natural consequences in life, you know, and, and it's kind of what we try to teach our children, isn't it? I mean, I, I say that to my daughter all the time. I was like, look, you, you're making decisions every day. And, for every decision you make, there will be a natural, con a natural consequence, and some may be great, and, and some may not be. I quite enjoy trying to make characters that are not necessarily very like. I mean, he's, he's on paper quite likable, actually, but at, when you see what he does, and that he has lied, and that he, even when he realizes he's done something absolutely terrible, he still can't confront it or admit to it. I like that because I think a lot of us do, you know, we, we, it's always about assessing what human behavior means and what it, what it does and what we do to get ourselves, how much, you know, how much time we devote to caring about our, our own plight rather than others and how he goes to the nth degree to, to make sure that he is okay. You know, he, him and his family, are protected, and that's what we that's what we do. People read into films what they want. You know, most times I just go to be entertained. Uh, and if I leave there and I've learned something, that's a plus. If I leave there and I feel like you know I'm a better person because I saw that film, that's a plus. Um, first and foremost, I go to the movies to be entertained, and hopefully taken out of my mundane existence into 
something that's uh, foreign to me and exciting to me and that elicits a, a response of some sort. And that's, that's the most I hope for, that I went in there and I embodied a character and did some things that people can look at and say, well, if I was that character, I'd have done that. Or they'd look at the character and go, oh my god, I'm afraid of him, or, or I like him, or whatever. But you know, as long as we get some response from him, that's, that's my hope. I won't let you get away with this. Yeah, you will, or I'll ruin you. Well, I hope it's an edge of your seat thriller that keeps people engaged from the beginning because there's a lot going on in the movie and uh, hopefully there'll be a surprise for them and what ends up coming out of it uh, from what they think in the beginning. Uh, it sounds really silly, uh, but I really enjoyed getting hit in the head with a hammer by Sam Jackson. That was just like, it's kind of one of those things I'll always look back on and it's like one of those moments that like, it gets, at least I, I have my Sam Jackson moment. Well, it's like an, an entertaining film, uh, something that there's a, there's a plot with, uh, with twist that you don't, you don't see coming. Uh, but at the same time, again, uh, something where they can identify with the character and like the character and feel that empathy while they're watching the movie and, uh, and, and, and feel the pain, the pain of this character. I think this is, this is very, very important because a thriller, a thr or any movie, any movie actually, Plot is great, plot is very important, but uh, without emotions, uh, a movie is really not a movie. And uh, so that's what the audience would expect from this movie.